Hello, here is an introduction to Modo, to a Foundry Modo. And uh, there is a student version that you can download for one year, I think. Uh, or you can start with the trial with 30 days. And it's exactly the same using PC, Mac, or Linux. Uh, remember also, you install first Modo, and then you also have to install the content. And what we call the content, if you press F6, it's this it's all so i press function six uh, the content are all of those uh, material uh, meshes assets and this is three separate files that you can download and install each file is around 1.5 gig but you could still uh, use modo just with modo only so usually when you start Modo, you could start using it right away. Now, uh, to make all of my video the same and other video on the web, I'm not going to show you the new layout yet. I'll go back to the old one and I'll show you a few things that I usually do. If you use a computer that someone else has previously used, you can go System, Reset Preferences. This is very good. It'll give you a fresh Modo, like Factor install. Uh, do not use this one. Uh, file reset, it reset the UI, but it doesn't do a, the full blown is this one. This is much better. There's three things that I usually do when I get a new model. I go to model. Uh, that's the old way with uh, most of the thing we'll do will be modeling anyway. Uh, this is more for advanced user. And I click on only so you can see all of them. Um, but this is important. Uh, when you orbit, if you click here, you can see it's uh, the floor is tilted. Uh, it's good for modeling, but it's not very useful for lighting or animating. So I usually turn that off. So it's here under the gear, uh, trackball rotation, and you say no. You set it to no. Voilà. And the last thing that I would do. Um, look, if we use an object and uh, we get another one, uh, only the selected one is shaded. This is something I don't really like, uh, so I click here and that makes all of them shaded. And as you can tell now when we orbit, it doesn't tilt the horizon because of these settings. So uh, once again, what I do is um, click here switch to model, click here once, trackball to no, and all objects shaded. That's it. When you have this, you've got a clean model, we can start doing a lot of things. To bring our first object, we can right click, primitive, cube. That's the way I like to, you can also grab them here, but I'm just used to that way. To zoom is the scroll. So you spin the scroll on the mouse, or you click here but it's better to use the mouse. This one is maybe a hair smoother. To orbit, Alt, Alt, you press Alt and you click and drag. Or you can do it here too. And to pan is Alt and Shift, like this. Uh, or you pan here. When you click on an object, and its wireframe turns yellow, it means it's selected. It's the same as clicking here. And then you can press delete if you want to get rid of it on the keyboard. Control plus Z to undo, to go back to there. Um, voila. If you're far away and you want your object to be uh, centered, you press A. A like uh, Albert. Very useful. I can be here and I press A. Um, to move an object around, all of your uh, scale rotation are transform tools are here. So you could click on one and then use the arrow. So this is up and down, left and right. And when you're done, you can press W again. Now, uh, instead of clicking here, sorry. Uh, if you wait, it tells you that it's W. So the hotkey is W. It's actually easier to do it with the hotkey and W to get rid of it. Now, you can do it this way. 
or you can type here and you see we are in metric right now but you could type inches too it would work and you could just type the value that you need so either way both are good now what you can also do is press w leave your finger on and then when you let go it goes away so this is rotation so it's e uh, the hotkey is e and we could turn it and we could set up maybe 45 degree so another way enter is to do it here um, and then we have the scale with r so w e r they are next to each other on the keyboard and here we could scale like this like that the three at once or two at once so this is the blue and the red uh, it's not because I've got a value here and uh, we can scale also here I could say 200 percent here so rotation is in degree this is in uh, metric and this is in percentage to drop a tool we could press R again but the best way is Q Q is almost like escape you're dropping the active tool so let's start to build something interesting so I can go right click primitive Q if I need to name this you click once this is called the item list and you name it uh, table or shelf board if you click here you can delete and this is like Photoshop so this could be called an item we could almost call this a layer a mesh an object it's kind of the same thing and here it's how you hide it if you need to hide it so now R and we can scale it down I could also use the percentage here and scale it like this to make one ball voila Q to drop now that we have those value we want to get rid of those value because if you do a bevel or you keep on it's going to be stretch so you, if you keep on modeling so freeze scale very important especially for rotation and now if I need many of them I can go Control D to duplicate Control plus D and the new one is on top of the old one so you have to move it like this or I can go delete and because here as you know I need more than one so I can go duplicate clone and here we have a tool but the tool is not connected to the object to show you if I go six nothing happened so to connect a tool to an object you have to click now it's connected and now you can move the arrow and you see the eight copy maybe a hair more we could also just type the value here when you're happy Q to drop A to frame here we're going to rotate this I think it's on X Z so 90 degree on Z and we need to get rid of this because now my X becomes my Y so freeze rotation W we can move that here move this here Control D to create a new one and uh, we can move them yeah if I want many of them I can just select all of this and go Control G and I can name this shelf so this is like a folder meaning that now you can go W and you can move the whole thing and E and turn it and um, if you want to ungroup you can select them all using shift drag and drop outside undo because I do want them in if you want to select all of them quickly double click now you can control D to copy everything and on the new copy you don't need to select them all you just need to select the top and I'm going W again voilà. And if we want to start doing a render, we need a floor. Right click primitive plane. We need to scale this one by pressing R. Move it down. Voilà. And 
and then we can press uh, F8 to see our render. Now this doesn't equal this, so we have to go camera, render camera. Yeah? So that's basically what I show in class for beginner. Um, now for the sake of the video, I'm going to push it a little bit further. So let's, oh, and uh, sorry guys, uh, if you want this to match, you make sure that this is on camera. And if you want to save an image, you click here. And you go IO, save image, and you can save a JPEG. Uh, but like I was saying, let's take it a bit further. So now what I would do, I'm going to unparent, ungroup, drag and drop in the middle, select those two. And um, now I'm going to select this one and this one using Shift, right click and merge. So merge is more powerful, has more um, intensity than the grouping because now those two are on the same layer, the same container. And I'm going to do the same for the rest. So now we can do more complex operation. Control to deselect, right click and I'm going to go merge like this. So now this is one block and the other one is another block. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to do something. This is just one way of doing conceptual. Huh? It's not, uh, if I really wanted a clean shelf, uh, I would maybe do it a different way or even use Rhino. So now I want to do a cutout on this. So I want this to cut into this. So to do a cutout, you always select the piece that will receive the cutout. So this one first, shift click the other one. Then you go under mesh edit, boolean, and uh, you want to subtract, cut, and the last selected with this guy. Say okay. It looks like nothing happened, but look, actually something did happen. Because now if you move this back, you see we have a cut. So now what I can do is cut the other way. So now I'm going to cut uh, this one with that. So this will receive the cut. Boolean, subtract, last selected. And now if you drop everything, and move, you'll realize that we have to cut on both sides. So now I can go here and I can go plus 180 degree because I want to flip it and move it like this. Voila. We're almost done and I think in class I show you a little bit of rendering just a hair. So let's redo this. Yeah, that's good. Maybe let's move this too. Voila. So it's actually better if it's more on the back. And a bit wider. So now I can go here. And to create a material group for this, M, M like material, give it a name, so I could call this glass, and this one you can give it a name too, and I can call this black. And you could already change the color here. So now if we press F8, we'll see the render. Okay, I'm going to come a little bit closer to see a bit more detail. And uh, this could move, uh, it's okay, we'll leave it. So, oh, auto save, I'm not also a big fan. You can go system preferences, and the auto save is somewhere here. I usually turn that off. Um, now, if we sh switch to shading, we can see our two shading masks. 
if you click here it shows you the black if you click here you see the glass so to make glass look like glass to a certain degree uh, material transparency usually things that are transparent they are really transparent almost fully so 98 percent transparent uh, glass usually have a bit of color so I'll give it a hair of a blue just a grain of salt and uh, glass usually is refractive so the light bending through a medium like if you uh, look at an ice cube in water it looks a little bit larger so one four one five and that should start to look like glass it's extremely slow because I'm using a very old notebook it's uh, yeah it's time to uh, get a new one and uh, now what I can also do it's give it fillet here for glass to look better so instead of modeling the fillet I can go on the the base of the glass and if you go totally at the end there's a round edge width so if we put let's say 5 mm mil it will create a fillet at rendering time and the glass will look much better also what we can do to fine tune the glass let's give it a hair more color and a glass usually has an absorption of light so we can play here with maybe 50 mil like how much of the light gets absorbed and now I put too much color and what's the magic number it's when you start seeing less color so you go up and when the blue or the green start to disappear it's more that you're, you're getting there you see we need just a little bit we can do the same for the black and go uh, here and uh, first tab and we can say run at five mil that would make the black look much better too and when you move the mouse it render where you move yeah. so you see the edge here and I think that's a lot for our first video so we'll stop here